Chapter 1, Lesson 9, Estimate Roots. You will be able to use roots to estimate solutions. You know that the square root of 8 is not a whole number because 8 is not a perfect square. The number line below shows that the square root of 8 is between 2 and 3. 2 squared is 4, so square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 9 is 3 because 3 squared is 9. So if you put your regular numbers on the bottom and your radical numbers, remember radical sign is the square root symbol, you put your radical signs up top, you can compare them just like normal numbers. Since 8 is closer to 9, we would say the best whole number estimation for square root of 8 is 3. Now, when you do this, it's okay to check your answers on the calculator. However, you need to show me the work. So for example, we need to know our perfect squares to do these and then pretty soon our perfect cubes. So let's talk about our perfect squares and I'll put them along the bottom here. We have 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, then we have 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, and so on. Okay, these are your perfect squares. So 83, square root of 83 falls in between these two numbers. So this is what I need to see for work. I need to see square root of 81 and I need to see square root of 100. Okay? And square root of 83 falls over here. Well, I know the square root of 81 is 9 and the square root of 100 is 10. Look at the square root of 83. Is it closer to square root of 81? Or is it closer to square root of 100? Just compare the numbers. Is 83 closer to 81 or 100? It's closer to 81, therefore the estimation would be 9. Let's move these down and out of the way. Okay. Let's look at letter B. Square root of 35 falls in between these two numbers. So I would say square root of 25. Then we have our square root of 35. Then we have our square root of 36. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 36 is 6. So the square root of 35 is closer to that square root, which means my integer would be 6 that it's closest to. And let me rewrite that one over there. Okay. 170. Well, 170 would fall definitely after the 169. And we need to know the next square root. 169 square root of that is 13. So we really need to know the square root, or excuse me, 14 squared. So go ahead on your calculator and figure out what 14 squared is. 196. So our other number down here would be 196. Okay. So square root 196. We then have the square root of 170 which is closer to 169, therefore our closest estimation would be 13. Forty-four point eight. Looking back at your perfect squares, it would fall somewhere here. So between square root of 36 and square root of 39. So square root of 36 Square root of 49. Square root of 36 is 6. 
square root of 49 is 7. And then in between we have 44.8. 44.8 is closest to 49. Therefore, my integer estimation is 7. Now we're dealing with cube roots. So let's write our perfect cubes. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Our next perfect cube is 125. And we'll do one more. 6 times 6 times 6. And I'm going to use a calculator for this one. So we get 216. Okay, we'll do more if we need more. So we have the cube root of 25. 25 falls in between 8 and 27. So we have cube root of 8, cube root of 27. The cube root of 25 falls in between. Cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 27 is 3. And 25 is closer to 27 than it is to 8. Therefore, 3 would be our closest integer estimation. Square or cube root of 62 falls in between these two cube roots. So cube root of 27. I'm going to put cube root of 62 in here. And then I have cube root of 64. On your number line, cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 27 is 3. 62 is closest to 64, so our integer estimation is 4. Cube root of 59. Looking back at our cube roots, 59 again falls in between 27 and 64. So cube root 27. Let's write our cube root of 59 in there. And cube root 64. The cube root of 27 is 3. The cube root of 64 is 4. And 59 is closest to 64. Therefore, closest integer estimation is 4. Cube root of 320. Now, over here in our list, we only went up to 216. So let's do 7 times 7 times 7 to get another number. 343. So 216 and 343. Those are our numbers. Cube root of 216 and cube root of 343 which means the cube root of 320 falls in between. 216 cube root is 6. Cube root of 343 is 7. And 323, or 320 is closest to 343, which means our integer estimation is 7. Last one I'm going to do down here for a little bit more room. We have cube root of 129.6. So we need to find the cube root that's the perfect cube that's smaller and the perfect cube that's bigger. 129.6 falls in between these two numbers, 125 and 216. Cube root of 125 is cube root of 216 is 6. 129.6 is closest to 125, which means our integer estimation is 5. Now to solve equations. y squared equals 55. To get y by itself, we square root both sides. y equals 
Now we don't know what the square root of 55 is, so we need to use our estimation method. What are two perfect squares that are above and below 55? Well, we have 7 times 7, which is 49, and 8 times 8, which is 64. And the square root of 55 would fit in between those two numbers. 55 is closest to 49, which is 7. The square root of 49 is 7, I should say. So our closest estimation is 7. Now remember, there are two solutions. So it could be 7 or negative 7. When you're solving equations, you have two solutions, the positive and the negative. Letter K. D squared equals 95. We need to square root both sides. D equals square root of 95. Well, two perfect squares that's in between. We have square root of 81 and square root of 100. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 100 is 10. 95 is closer to 100. So my estimation would be positive 10 or negative 10. Cube roots. Estimate the solution. To get rid of a cube, we cube root it. So we have x equals the cube root of 210. Going back to our cube root list here, we have 210, which is in between 125 and 216. The cube root of 125 is 5. And the cube root of 216 is 6. 210 is closest to 216. Therefore, my greatest integer estimation would be 6. Now, cube roots, there's only one answer. The golden rectangle is found frequently in the uh, nautilus shell. The length of the longer side divided by the length of the shorter side is equal to 1 plus square root of 5 plus 2, or divided by 2. Estimate this value. In order to estimate this, we need to estimate the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is in between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, which are perfect squares. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. If I were to estimate to the... Um, closest integer, it would be 2. So we have 1 plus 2 over 2. Again, I'm replacing that square root of 5 with the closest integer. And solve it. 1 plus 2 is 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. The formula t equals square root of h over 4 represents the time t in seconds that it takes an object to fall from a height of h feet. If a rock falls from a height of 125 feet, estimate how long it will take to reach the ground. So here we're replacing that h with 125. So in order to estimate it, we need to know what 125 is closest to. So we have square root of 125. We need a perfect square smaller and a perfect square bigger. Well, 11 squared is 121, which means our next integer would be 12 or square root of 144. 125 is closest to 121, so we would estimate this integer to be 11. And 11 divided by 4 is 
And this is how long it will take in seconds.